Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Commissioner Chronicles on the DLF YouTube channel. I am the host, Nathan Powell. I am a commissioner. I host lots of different league types, league, league formats, league rules. And I started this show to kind of go, dive deep into specific league formats and rules. And occasionally, I will bring on a guest because I do not commission every single type of league. I don't <laughs> commission every single rule possible. So I am bringing on my friend Dave. He is Ron Dynasty on Twitter. And he is a commi uh, a commission. He is a Canton ca campus to a campus to can campus to Canton. Campus That's to right. Canton extraordinaire, <laughs> according to my Twitter mentions. When I, when I tweeted out, "Hey, I need your favorite campus to Canton commissioner," let me know. And thousands of people said uh, you need to get in touch with Ron Dynasty. So oh, I did. No. I, I mean, it was either thousands or one, one, one of the two. Basically, uh, the same thing. All right, so. Let's get into the nitty gritty. So first, let's start off with what is a campus to Canton league? Um, you know, it's a format that's, that's growing over recent years. You know, Debbie started growing, you know, probably in the early 2010s. And now we're in the 2020s. And this campus to Canton thing might be taking off. It seems to be. Uh, I see uh, the campus to Canton website has come up. They do a great job. Um, yeah, everybody tried to make deeper and deeper Debbie leagues every year. Uh, it just kind of kept going deeper and deeper and stranger and stranger as fantasy football tends to do. And uh, yeah, I was not one of the original uh, owners in the campus to Canton leagues. I actually was able to take over an uh, orphan after year one or year two. I think I was in fairly early and I just loved it. I loved it right away. I didn't, I'd have never really watched a lot of college football, believe it or not, but uh, I just kind of fell in love with the format and it just kind of hit scratched all my itches, you know, I really, really hit what I wanted in a fantasy football league. Yeah. So campus to Canton combines the Debbie aspect with a college fantasy football league. When, when you're recruiting for these leagues, when, whether it's an orphan or a new league, is there a lot of hesitance to dive into the college fantasy football sphere? I'm not seeing as much hesitation into college football as there used to be. However, both of mine are also IDP. And that is usually where I run into issues with people. They're like, College football, awesome, sign me up. Oh, IDP, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> so uh, it's it's definitely getting easier. And I think college football in general, the fantasy aspect is hitting a lot more mainstream. So it's getting easier and easier. And I'm seeing leagues pop up all the time. My first thing that is one of my barriers to why I haven't joined a campus Canton league is the league platforms. Uh, so yeah. I am a devout My Fantasy League commissioner, devout Same. My Fantasy League uh, player. I do not play any fantasy ball outside of, of that league format. MFL does not support the campus Canton format because they don't do scoring for college fantasy football. So that is correct. How do you go about navigating league platforms? Do you do half on, like the college side on one site, MFL on another? Do you do uh, MFL? you know, only and then do the college manually. How does that work? I actually run two leagues and they both do it differently. So um, both, as, as far as I know, there's other sites that have dabbled into college fantasy football a little bit. I know Yahoo had it for a year or two and I've heard a lot of talk about Sleeper adding it. Uh, I have only actually used fan tracks for their college fantasy football. Uh, they do a pretty good job. I also am a MFL first and foremost uh, commissioner. So uh, adapting what I like to do to what they offered was a little bit of a challenge at first, uh, but they they do a pretty good job with the NIL stuff that's happening with all of the uh, name, image, and likeness stuff with college players. Maybe it becomes easier to have that and more sites will start offering it. I also saw a headline about a, week, a month ago that the NCAA was changing their statistics uh, licensing so that they could sell that. And that's been another place that's really, a lot of sites have run into issue is getting consistent statistics. Um, to actually give you the points for your leagues. Uh, but I have only ever run a league, the college side, on fan tracks. And then I know a lot of people run in the NFL component on Sleeper or MFL. Uh, I have one that is fan tracks for college, MFL for the pro side, and I have another that's uh, fan tracks for both of them. So kind of whatever you're comfortable with, you can fit. And how do transactions work there? So do you end up putting your Debbie players on the, on the NFL site? Or like, let's say I want to trade you um, Kenny Pickett for uh, Bryce Young. 
do I give you Kenny Pickett on the NFL site and you give me Bryce Young on the college site? How does that work? Yeah, I've seen people talk about uh, the possibility of doing leagues that was one trade for both sides, is at least if you were hosting both leagues on fan tracks. I've never been able to find a setting that allowed that. Uh, but yeah, usually you'll talk to the owner. You'll say, hey, I want to do this trade. I usually encourage people to list whatever NCAA assets they're trading in the comments on the MFL side as part of the trade. Um, sometimes they just say for NCAA assets or whatever. And so you'll have two separate trades that process one from MFL and one from fan tracks. So you mentioned some inconsistencies with scoring with, you know, league sites and things like that. Is your scoring the same for your college fantasy as NFL? Is that kind of the commissioner's choice? Is there a, a standard within campus camp format that like one is different than the other? Um, I think you can run it like any fantasy league. I mean, every commissioner has their their favorite settings that they usually start with and then kind of tweak if they want to do something a little more unique. Uh, I, I believe I have the same settings on both. Uh, Fantrax offers pretty progressive scoring options. Um, I've been running leagues forever. And so I've, I mean, coming from Yahoo and ESPN back in the day where you couldn't set the different scoring for the different receptions and the first downs and all that stuff. Fantrax offers a pretty good slate like MFL does. Um, so there's, I mean, you know, you can manipulate the MFL scoring so much to get really, really unique scoring. So there's a few things that I wasn't able to get perfect, but I like to have basically the same on both sides. I would encourage uniformity as much as possible. One differentiation I've seen is like allowing power five picks versus all of college football. Do you have a preference there? And do you, what are the pros and cons of each if you have? I haven't actually played in a Power 5 only version. The first one I jumped into was full college football. And honestly, that's what I fell in love with the most. Uh, my jumping into CD, uh, Campus to Canton leagues kind of coincided with my... Uh, I, I don't want to say I'm falling out of love with NFL fantasy because I still love it. But it's just, I don't know, it just kind of hit... It wasn't hitting all the same notes that it hit forever. And that was one of the things I really, really loved about the college uh, fantasy aspect is even though I don't watch a lot of college games, even when I did watch college football a lot, it was just my team that I would watch on Saturday. But there's not 32 quarterbacks. There's 132 or however many college teams there are. And I think that really makes it fun because you find out your guy from, you know, middle of directional school, school Michigan scored. 80 points this week because he threw eight touchdowns and 600 passing yards and stuff like that. And it's just, yeah, I enjoy all of the smaller schools and being able to find that diamond in the rough on a given week. So that's where I lean, but same with every other fantasy league. It's kind of whatever your, your pick your poison. I, I, I think this is another example of something that, you know, just going to change from league to league, but how deep are campus to Canton leagues? Like, it, is it like a typical, like, let's say you have 30 on your NFL roster, you have 30 on your college roster. Is it deeper? Is it, is it, you know, more narrow? What, what does it look like in terms of roster size, lineups, all those things? I would suggest kind of going to the edge of what you think is comfortable. Or if you're starting a league, put in your bylaws, we may expand rosters by five or 10 for the first three years or something. I've played uh, a very, at least a variation of college fantasy football now for four or five years. And I'm still kind of finding the sweet spot on, on my uh, multiple copy league on what's really the best uh, setting for it. Uh, some guys don't want to go deeper. And especially if you're in a power five only, you're not going to want to have nearly as deep rosters because there's just not as big of a player pool, but I still am finding guys on the waivers. It, I, I maintain that with campus to Canton leagues more than any, you can win the league by being active during the year. You can win the league by picking up the guys that the no name freshman that got playing minutes and becomes an all-star on his team, you know, in one of these, these uh, non power five conferences. So I, I would recommend leaning deeper, but just kind of give yourself the safety valve in your bylaws that we may roll these rosters a little bit deeper next year. We may cut them back and kind of get the sweet spot for what you want for your league. Obviously yeah. with the, with the waiver aspect. So one, one of the things in Debbie leagues, rookie drafts and rookie options will have players that sneak through that weren't, you know, known the year before like Kenny Pickett mm -hmm. and uh, Jameson Williams are on a lot of rookie drafts and rookie options in Debbie leagues. Now yeah. in, a, in a campus to Canton league, those players would have been picked up off the waiver wire in the college sphere. So is there basically no rookie draft, rookie auction in campus Canton leagues? Or is there like a few like, you know, late seventh rounders that, that sneak through occasionally? What is what is the rookie rookie draft season look like for campus Canton leagues? You can kind of fit that to the identity you want your league to have. 
Uh, the league that I have that's all on fan tracks is smaller rosters in general. And I just created one draft. All of that I don't have a, a rookie and then an uh, NCAA incoming freshman draft. Mm -hmm. uh, we host the draft in July instead of right after the NFL draft. Uh, at the beginning of the league, I actually uh, took over for another commissioner. He did have it separate and we'd get maybe two rounds. And this is with IDP, two rounds. And I mean, Carson Wentz was a big pick because he came from from lower divisions. He wasn't rostered yet on the college side. But I think that's a weakness in a league when you can have a guy of that profile come through and nobody had him and the worst team happens to have, the you know, that pick. Mm -hmm. So I've seen some leagues where they just don't have waivers or they don't have waivers after week three or something. So you still have guys that are progressing as the year goes along and you'll have some of a stronger rookie draft. The way I preferred to solve it was just have one draft. You can use your pick to draft an uh, incoming freshman. You can use it to draft a player that's still on free agency from last year in the college league, or you can draft an incoming rookie that may still be available. So Trey Lance ended up being like the third or fourth pick last year when he came into the draft, also from a lower division. Um, some guys wanted the stud freshman. Some guys wanted the stud rookie. So I think that's a really nice solve. Uh, it's a little easier to solve if you're running an auction league or a bankroll league because that just affords you more options to do that. Uh, but a lot of people like to have those draft picks and those trades and stuff. And I, I've really liked that solution. And it does involve a little bit more commissioner work. There's not just a draft uh, module that'll take care of that for you. Uh, you need to make sure your owners know, hey, you can use your picks for either NFL or NCAA. So there is a little bit more work for that, but I think that makes the strongest draft process in the end. That's been my experience anyway. We'll wrap up with what are some of, are there any specific in-season duties that some, that a commissioner might see in their first year? Like, oh, wow, this is so much more extra work, or this is just another thing added to my plate. Like anything as an in-season uh, campus commissioner that you'd be doing that you might not otherwise think about? In-season, no. Um, be Open your rule book at the beginning, before up front, just like Scott Fish includes all the, you know, <laughs> if it all hits the fan rule, this is I'm going to make the decision that's best for the league. When you fill your league initially, fill it with owners that understand, I don't know for sure if this is going to be exactly what we want. This is what we're going for. Expect changes if this doesn't hit the right notes. Find owners that can be flexible to do it. Write your protections into your bylaws. Make sure you're covered so that you can get those things done. Uh, be prepared for a little bit more Google Sheets, whatever your preference is for keeping track of notes for players that maybe end up in JUCO or transfer the different things that happen with that. There's going to be some player tracking that you need to do. It's getting better and better as the team, as this becomes a bigger format, as college fantasy football gets better. It gets easier every year. But with the leagues that I run, same as you, very, very unique leagues that are already built in with a lot of extra commissioner work. My easiest work is during the season because I don't have as much stuff to do. I don't have as much that I need to track. Rosters are basically locked. Most of the transferring is done. It's it's mostly in season, fairly easy, but do expect a little bit of extra work in the off season if you want to pull it off just to cover your bases. All right. Is there anything that we haven't covered campus can wise? I feel like we've gone throughout the spectrum, but is there is there something that might pop up that if someone's like, I have a commissioner, I want to dive my head dive head first. I, obviously, I would say I would highly recommend talking to you, David, and any other campus can commissioners that we have in the dynasty community before doing it. But is there anything specific that you would like to, you know, share with the people? Uh, yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions anybody has. Uh, my fantasy league settings are hard to find sometimes. Same with fan tracks. Uh, if you have questions about the format, about the settings, whatever you're looking for, I'm happy to answer uh, at Ron Dynasty. Um, if you decide to take the dip into IDP, I will mention that Fantrax has decided, and this was before the statistics uh, thing the NCAA settled on about a month ago, uh, they decided for some reason not to track tackles this year, which is like taking all running yards away from a running back. So IDP, I would steer clear of for at least this year. See if things get fixed with this decision the NCAA said this uh, with the statistics to make things more uniform. Uh, but for offense only, which I think is what a lot of campus to Canton leagues is, just give it a try. I, I think it's a lot of fun. And there's a lot of guys with really great ins uh, resources out there and good information that are happy to help you. And, and you don't have to watch every game every weekend to 
know every player. Uh, it's really, you're not going to nail the draft. You're going to draft somebody that ends up the third string quarterback somewhere. One of those big recruits are going to come in. It's not NFL fantasy where you win your, by the draft and that settles the, the league. Be active during the season. I think you're really going to like it if you get a try.